Hey gluten-free foodies, today we're cooking up some apple magic. Join me for three super easy gluten-free apple recipes that'll satisfy your cravings. Let's get started. My name is Sharon McCaskill. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist focused on gluten-free living. And in this video, I'm going to be making three of my favorite recipes using apples. It is fall here in upstate New York, which means apples are plentiful. Um, this is the time of year where we can get the big bags of apples at the grocery store for super cheap, like 70 cents a pound or something. And this time of year, I always stock up on apples and make a lot of apple stuff. Um, the first thing we're gonna be making in this video is my delicious slow cooker applesauce. It has brown sugar in it and cinnamon um, and just all the flavors of fall. We usually make a couple batches of this every fall. We freeze it so we can pull it out whenever we're craving it in the winter. Um, I'm also gonna be making some apple ring pancakes for breakfast. I'll be making my apple crisp in a mug, um, or apple cobbler in a mug more so. Um, that was one of the first recipes I put on my site. Um, you all seem to love it, so I'm gonna make it in this video for you too. And I also wanted to say that if you are liking these videos, you're learning a lot, if you are interested in the types of things I cook and what I'm doing, I am also launching my membership this month. It is called the Gluten-Free Wellness Collective and the whole purpose of this is to create a community and a group where it's totally focused on gluten-free living. I'm hoping to um, just give really good evidence-based information in that group from all of my training as a registered dietitian as well as my like 12 years of experience managing celiac disease with my husband Tyler who has had celiac since he was like 10 or 11. Um, this membership is going to be really exciting because not only will you be learning from me, not only will you be getting um, the chance to hop on live cooking classes with me as well as exclusive trainings and teachings, so special classes that I'm uploading in there, all focus on gluten-free living, but I'm also bringing in some other experts to talk about things such as um, the importance of sleep and how to have better sleep health, um, planning gluten-free vacations, um, just oh, so many really cool, exciting, and fun things are happening in that group. So if you're curious about it and want to know more, click down in the description for more information. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So let's get started with this video and dive into some delicious apple treats. So the first apple recipe we're gonna start today is my brown sugar cinnamon applesauce. And I make this in the slow cooker. I absolutely love this recipe. It's foolproof, it's so easy. It takes very little work. I mean, the most work is chopping the apples. And honestly, I don't even peel them. I just throw them right in. It makes my applesauce a little bit pink, but it's easy. And it keeps a little bit more fiber in it. And my kids do not notice a difference. They just know it's brown sugar cinnamon applesauce. It tastes like apple pie filling and they love it. So I'm gonna wash up these apples, chop them, rough chop them, and add in some water, lemon juice, cinnamon, and brown sugar right into my slow cooker and let that cook for the day. So we have the apples, the water, the lemon juice, 
the cinnamon and the brown sugar all cooking together. I have it on low and I'm gonna let it go for about six to eight hours. Um, if you're in a rush, you could totally do it on high three to four, but it's gonna smell really good and I'm just gonna let it go for the day. Now so. that the applesauce is going, I'm gonna make myself some breakfast because I'm super hungry. I'm going to make these fun little apple pancakes um, out of apple rings. So to make this, I'm just gonna make a really simple pancake batter. Um, I would totally recommend just using a pancake mix that you have on hand. I'm gonna make mine from scratch just because I've been making pancakes since I was a little kid and I just kind of know how to do it. Um, you kind of just do equal parts of flour. I like the King Arthur measure for measure flour with milk. I'm using dairy-free milk. This is soy milk. I might have to make these a little bit runnier. We'll see when I go to dip it. Um, we're gonna do about a teaspoon of baking powder. Probably about a teaspoon of flax. You could totally use eggs instead of doing this, but this is just easy and cheaper. Eggs are kind of expensive right now. Plus I like the fiber from flax. About a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. About a teaspoon, a little bit less than a teaspoon probably of vanilla. And then I'm gonna add some cinnamon because I think it'll go really good with the apples, but I often add cinnamon to my pancakes anyways, because I like it. And give it a good mix. This is a little bit thick. Um, it would be okay-ish for regular pancakes, but I know that I'm gonna need it a little bit thinner. So I'm just gonna thin it out with a little bit of water. I would say I added about a fourth cup of water to this, um, just because I really needed it to be thinner to dip these apples in it. Okay, I'm going to cut these apples into rings and use my melon baller to kind of scoop out the core inside easily. while you core them like this one did, don't worry about it, it'll still work. So I'm heating up my pan. If you use cooking spray, go ahead and use that. I use green pans and you're not allowed to use cooking spray on them. Something about the silicone spray stuff messes up the pan. So I'm gonna use my Evo oil sprayer and just give it two really quick spritzes, spread it around in the pan a little bit and let it heat up. And while I do that, I'm gonna dip my rings in the pancake batter and cook myself up a big stack of pancakes. is cooking I realized I'm pretty much out of maple syrup so I put some in this little container I added some PB2 to it and a little bit of water and I'm just gonna mix it up and make kind of a peanut butter syrup to go on top of my pancakes because who doesn't love apples and peanut butter
cake stack here and I'm super excited for my breakfast and my peanut butter maple syrup. I'm just gonna drizzle that right on top. And this is my breakfast. Our next recipe is to make an apple cobbler right in a mug. And we make this using the microwave. I make this when I just want a quick snack, something like that, like it comes together really fast and it's so easy. So the first thing you're gonna do is peel an apple. I usually use like a really big apple. I only have the little tiny apples that came in the bag, so I'm going to use two. Um, I already peeled it, but we're just gonna chop it into equal chunks. You really, you really wanna get everything like the same-ish size, cause that'll help it cook a lot more even especially since we're cooking in the microwave. And you're gonna add those right into your microwave safe mug. Now that the apples are in the mug, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice, some sugar. I have to save some of this for the topping, so I'm just gonna put about half of that in, and some cinnamon. And we're just gonna mix it up. Okay, now that that's mixed, we're going to make our topping. I really like using almond flour for the topping. Into the almond flour, I use Anthony's, surprise. Most of my baking ingredients are Anthony's brand. I really like them, they're affordable and they're excellent quality. So I have some of their fine almond flour. To that, I'm adding some more sugar. You can totally use a sugar substitute like Swerve for this too. Um, I've used that, it's fine. You're gonna add some cinnamon to the topping also tiny bit of salt, just a little pinch. And then to make it all stick together, we're gonna add a teaspoon of applesauce. And we're just gonna mix that up until it kind of resembles sand. Um, depending on your almond flour, if you have like an almond meal that's a little bit more gritty or something, you may need a little bit more applesauce, or if it's way too wet, you may want to add just a tiny bit more almond flour to it. Just kind of play it by ear. It's what I do with most of my recipes. So you can kind of see that it comes together to make a paste. And what we're going to do is just kind of drop it in little clumps right on top of our apple mixture. You can kind of spread it out. It's just the type of topping you would get on like a apple cobbler. It doesn't have to completely cover the apples. So it should look like this on top, kind of like a cobbler before you bake it, because that's exactly what it is. We're gonna put it in the microwave. My microwave takes about 90 seconds. Yours may take a little bit more, a little bit less. What we're looking for, really, is those apples being nice and soft and tasting like apple cobbler. My cobbler's done. It took about a minute, 45 seconds. I put it in for another 15 or so. You can see that it shrinks down quite a bit in size when you cook it, which is why I use two of the little apples. But again, if you have like a really big honey crisp or something like that, I would just use one. Unless you're super hungry, then use two. And the topping turned a little bit browner. It was very pale at the beginning. Now it definitely is a little bit more golden. And it's ready to eat. 
I picked this up at the store. I found this at Aldi. It's an almond milk whipped cream in a can and I'm going to put that on top because it sounds delicious to me. And it's really good. Like, it obviously isn't as crispy as like a normal cobbler would be if you made it in an oven. But like, honestly, this is so good. This tastes so good. So good. I'm gonna go eat this now. The applesauce is done cooking. Um, it's cooked about six hours. It's two o'clock now. I put it in at around eight this morning. I did turn it up to high about an hour ago because I wanted it to cook a little faster. It didn't quite seem done enough for me. If you take a look, you can see that some of the apples have started bre breaking down all on their own. Um, so it is ready for me to take the stick blender to it. I could leave it in here probably another two hours and it would break down more on its own and you could have really chunky applesauce. But since I left um, the skins on, I didn't peel the apples. I just think it's gonna be a better consistency even if it stays a little bit chunky if I at least do some of it with the stick blender. So I'm gonna blend it up and have some. So I gave myself a little taste. The kids are gonna get off the bus here a little bit before three. Um, and I'm gonna keep this on warm, just here on the counter for them so when they come home they can have it. But yeah, I'm gonna taste it. You can see it's super dark brown. It's darker than most homemade applesauces. That's partially because I didn't peel my apples, but also because of the cinnamon and brown sugar. That's really good. Um, depending on your taste and preferences, you could add a little bit more regular sugar or brown sugar. I think it's sweet enough as is though. You could also add more cinnamon if you really like that. Um, if you really want it to taste like apple pie, you could add some ginger and nutmeg to it as well. That would taste really good. But my kids really just like the simple flavor of the brown sugar and the cinnamon. I hope you enjoy these recipes. If you wanna try them at home, all the recipes are in the video description. If you do try them, be sure to take a picture and tag me over on Instagram, letting me see what you make. As always, I hope that this video helps you continue to live a gluten-free life with confidence and having some fun along the way. If you like the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe. I release new videos every Monday. Thanks for watching.